Is anyone else in the waiting room, Danielle? Nope, we are good to go. Um, all righty, well, welcome, ladies, welcome. I'm not sure if there's any on the, on the call, but welcome to everybody. Um, this is a newbie meeting. If you're interested in entering the industry or new to the group, I hope you guys get a lot out of this um, meeting and I hope you're able to get your um, questions answered. Okay, why isn't it working? Okay, it worked. The mission for Black Women in Clinical Research, we come together to educate, empower, support, and help Black women and men and minorities, of course, thrive in the clinical research industry. Our agenda for this evening is we'll start with a icebreaker. We'll also discuss where we work, different careers in clinical research, also different clinical research organizations that you can work for, as well as sponsors, recruitment agencies, how to get started, how to navigate in the Facebook group, the services we offer, mentorship, and additional resources. As an icebreaker, you'll be able to go over your name, location, background, and how did you first hear about clinical research? I'll start. I'm Jasmine. I am the brand ambassador leader. I'm located in Raleigh, North Carolina. My background, I have a healthcare background. I actually started in the industry as a CTA and moved my way up to a CRA1 at Cineos Health. I first heard about the clinical research industry through my neighbor, which is actually my now mentor. Does anyone else wanna share something about themselves? I can't really see my participants. I can share. Um, I actually just joined. I'm trying to get my camera back on. Might be on. Oh, it's on. Ouch. I'm Ashante McLean. Um, I live in Chicago. I have a background in healthcare as well. I'm an undergrad in public health. I have a master's in health communication. And I've um, predominantly worked in large academic medical centers uh, for the last year and a half. I've worked for <clears throat> um, a value-based care company with I think we lost you. Um, oh, sorry. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. okay. Um, when I worked at the academic medical centers, though, I was exposed to clinical research because my typically the chiefs of the different divisions were also PIs on individual studies. So I would work with their um, their with their clinical team as well as their research team. So that was like my first intro, but then I have a few friends who are CRAs, lead CRAs, senior CRAs, and um, so I was interested, and I, that's how I actually joined this group. So nice to meet everyone. Nice to meet you. Anyone else? Hi, my name is, um, I'm Tanisha Harrell. Um, I've been at Duke. I, I'm, I live here in Durham, and I've been at Duke University for 19 years. I have a bachelor's in business. Um, I, I Now I manage a clinic where our providers go into the homes and do home visits, um, but I'm trying to switch careers. I'm trying to get into clinical trials. And one of my best friends is actually a director at um, the company Aura. And um, I used to do studies long time ago, way back in the day. And I was just interested in, you know, how it would be to be on the other side. So I'm, I've been trying hard for the last few months to get into clinical trials, something. I've put out, I know, a million applications <laughs> trying to get into the industry. So, and then she, my friend is the one that actually joined me into this group. So I'm, I'm a newbie as well. Awesome. Uh, Grateful to have you. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Hey, girl. Hey. Hi. Uh, my name is Latrika Salmon. I am in Tallahassee, Florida. Uh, currently work as a molecular surveillance epi, uh, and I'm in my DR program. And so I'm very interested in the next two years making that transition into uh, the clinical research realm. So I'm a newbie, and I'm here to find out all the information. Great to meet you, doctor. <laughs> 
Hello, everyone. Um, my name is. Hi, my name is Bridget Shalmatal. I'm in Houston, Texas. Um, I've been in the research industry coming up on 20 years now, um, and I have an oncology background, but um, worked in regulatory um, research management, QA, research coordinator. You name it, I've done it. So um, I'm brand ambassador for Black Women in Clinical Research, and just excited to see all these new people coming into our industry. Thanks, Bridget. Um, I'll go next. My name is Itajua. Um, I'm in Charlotte. I also work for Cineos as a medical affairs coordinator. Oh, nice. um, I just finished my master's in biomedical science. So that's kind of how I got into the pharmaceutical world. And I just kind of wanted to throw it out there to Tanisha. I also applied to like 50 places for months and all it took was one yes. So just wait on it, it's coming. Big part. Okay, thank you. I can go. Hi, everyone. My name is Danielle. Um, I am from Detroit, Michigan. My background, I have experience in microbiology, clinical genetics. I wanted to go to medical school when I first went to my HBCU, Clark Atlanta University. Um, <laughs> I'm not going to mess with... Uh, <laughs> I'm not going to mess with Jasmine because, you know, she it's always says nice that. Look. We're number one to HBCU, so start there. <laughs> yes. So, um, yes, Clark Atlanta University. So for me, I never knew about clinical research. This was something that wasn't introduced while I was in my undergrad. So when I first heard about clinical research, it was when I had graduated college and I was working, you know, um, in the lab because I decided not to go to medical school. And so that was pretty much the option. They told you either go to, go to um, medical, if you don't go to medical school, then you have to work in the lab. And, you know, it was like one or the other. There weren't really a whole lot of options at that time. And so for me, when I ran into one of my college classmates and she told me about clinical research, you know, I really made it my mission to learn more about clinical research. But I found out during that time, it was so difficult even though when I was looking at the jobs, it said all you needed was a bachelor's degree in biology. So for me, you know, going through that and wanting to reach out to other people to ask them like, how did you get in? So that just really made me create Black Women in Clinical Research because realizing that there was a lack of diversity in the industry. So I just wanted to pull everyone together. And, you know, I'm, I'm very thankful that each and every one of you guys are here because, you know, as you'll find out in the meeting, it's not easy, but it is, you know, you, you can get in. So with, with the resources and with the help, you know, and the knowledge that we're going to um, give you tonight, it's going to help you get in. And, you know, it's okay to get rejected. I know a lot of times people, you know, even myself, I got rejected for years. And so, you know, when you tell people that, you know, because a lot of times it's months, but with creating Black women in clinical research, it gave me the tools you know, I feel like the person that says is that commercial where he says, not only am, um, you know, not only am I a president, but I'm the client or what, you know, so that's how, that's how I feel because I, I use the services myself and they help me. And so I encourage everyone to, you know, take notes and to really, you know, listen to what everyone has to say, because it is extremely helpful and it will help you in your process. I just dropped my daughter off at she's going to Clark. I, she just checked in. Um, this is Tanisha. Um, last month at Clark. I love Clark. That was <laughs> the best, the best decision of my life. Clark. <laughs> Clark. <laughs> you sound like uh Drake. <laughs> <laughs> um, hi everyone. My name is DeAndra. I'm a current um brand ambassador for Black Women in Clinical Research. I'm located in Charleston, South Carolina. Um, I also, just like Danielle, did not hear anything about clinical research while I was in college. Um, so I learned it in my first career job at a pediatric office. Um, I was actually turned down to be a clinical research coordinator there. So I moved on to a different um, place. Um, pain management. Um, I got my first break as a clinical research assistant. So just like Danielle said, you will get a lot of no's um, 
a whole lot. It's possible. Like you can get a million no's. Only thing it takes is one yes. So you have to keep going. You have to keep trying. I'm currently a clinical research coordinator. Um, I lead two COVID trials currently, um, but I have a background in pain management, oncology, um, just regular, regular, I'm sorry, uh, general health stuff. Um, so it's very rewarding at the end of the day, and you'll see why it took so long to actually get the, the job that you actually wanted. So good luck to everyone. Hello, all. My name is Sarian Ralston. I am from Montgomery, Alabama, and my background is in social work. I'm a director of case management. I've worked at a FQHC, which is a federal qualified health center for the last 12 years. I first heard about clinical research. Well, I had some thoughts about, I knew, that, knew about clinical research, but I didn't know all of the positions. I just basically thought it was a scientist and statisticians and my loctician, I have sister locks and she's a CRA and um, started talking to her about clinical research and became very interested in basically changing my field, um, which I'm in. I'm hoping to learn more about um, clinical research and how I can kind of shift and transition into that field. So glad to be here. We're glad to have you. Hi, um, ladies. I, I, oh, okay. Hi, everyone. My name is Ashley Turk. Um, I'm hey, originally girl, hey. from. Hey, I'm originally from Atlanta. Um, I graduated from Tuskegee University. Since we're talking about the HBCUs, um, so um, I actually um, am one of the um, admins for the Texas chapter, um, and I'm currently a CRA too in oncology. So. Welcome everyone to the Black Women Clinical Research to the newbies. And like everyone else is saying, you're definitely gonna get some no's, but there's definitely gonna be a chance where you can get a yes. So don't give up. I can go if anybody else is gonna go. Um, so hello everybody, my name is Elena. Um, I am located in Cincinnati, Ohio. Um, my background, I went to the University of Cincinnati uh, for undergrad. And I actually um, had a bachelor's in uh, communication sciences and disorders. Um, and so my background is speech and language pathology. Um, how did I hear about clinical research? So I have family members who have been in the industry for a long time um, from data management to CRA. Um, so I heard about it after undergrad, but it was like everybody has said, it's really hard to get in and specifically without previous um, experience. So at that time, um, it was a lot of no's. So for those who are getting no's without experience, that's normal. <laughs> Just have to continue to apply. And um, yeah, so I've heard, I've had clinical research background now. Uh, I've been working at Cincinnati Children's Hospital for like two and a half years, um, specifically um, um, on rare disease, um, EOE. And I've had about two different positions in clinical research, one budgets and contracts, and now more of a traditional CRC role. Um, and I'm actually currently um, about to change roles again. Um, so I'm in the same process as a lot of you guys um, applying and um, interviewing in that type of situation. So um, welcome everybody. Oh yeah, I forgot to say, I'm also an ambassador for Black Women Clinical Research and I'm also a Midwest admin for uh, Cincinnati. Um, so for anybody still trying to get in, um, like Danielle said, it took me years. So it's, it's not uncommon. Um, you just have to continue to revamp your resumes and keep um, you know, doing um, online courses and free, there's so much free stuff out there to better yourself and put you in positions and make those connections with people and somebody's gonna pull for you and then all the doors will open up. So keep at it. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Jackie Quivers. I'm located in Washington, DC. Um, I went to the uh, Tennessee State University in Nashville, Tennessee um, and my background is in biology. I am currently a program manager at Johns Hopkins um, in the oncology department. Um, for all of the clinical trials there. Um, I first heard about clinical research um, maybe about 
10 to 10 to 11 years ago, um, I just kind of stumbled, stumbled upon it on accident. Um, and I've been in it ever since. Um, I wanted to join the group because I'm usually the only black face in the room <laughs> in clinical research. And um, when I saw um, this uh, program on, on LinkedIn, I just had to join. So hi, everyone. Hello, everyone. My name is Alexius, and currently I'm in Madison, Wisconsin, but I actually went to school at Albany State University in Georgia, where I studied forensic science. And then I came to Madison for my PhD, which I'm currently still working on in pharmacology. And I first heard about clinical research, you know, now that I'm in grad school and I can interact with all the doctors. And I really enjoy the preclinical work that I do now, but I really want to affect people, particularly who suffer from mental illnesses, um, which I've just been seeing a lot of, and especially now with COVID, I see a lot of, so I just wanna be more closer to helping human beings. I'll go ahead and go and, and kind of wrap, wrap up so we can transition to the next part. Uh, my name is J Jamila. I'm a brand ambassador. I am located in Atlanta, Georgia. My background, is in neuroscience um, with a concentration in human rights. I have been in research it, like overall for about eight years, clinical re research for the last four. Um, I got my start in, in college when I had an NIH funded program um, take me in and show me everything in the lab. Um, so I was in lab first and then I wanted to break into clinical when I graduated because I thought I wanted to be a doctor uh, again to go along with what a lot of folks you know experienced in college it was lab or it was medicine and so I wanted to get my hours so I wanted to be a clinical research coordinator because I thought that was the best way to do that um, it took me years to 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 be exact and I had to change states um, to make it happen and crawled up to be a coordinator. And today I am IHC CRA at a CRO. Um, I'm transitioning to be a traveling CRA in the coming month. Um, big car. So, <laughs> big car. And so, yeah, nice to meet everyone. Ex excited to be here. Well, thank you all for introducing yourselves and letting us get to know a little bit more about you, more about you. So where do we work? Some of us work at home in our home office or at hospitals, medical offices, research centers, pharmaceutical and medical device companies or contract research organizations. Okay, I think my thing is out of um out of order, but it's okay. We're gonna get it back on, back in order. So, what are some of the types of careers that you can be a part of? Different entry level clinical research jobs include being a clinical trial assistant, a clinical research coordinator, a clinical trial associate, a research assistant project specialist, IRB document specialist, clinical trial coordinator, clinical research specialist, clinical project associate, and the list continues to go on. A lot of these, well, the CRC and CTA roles are common entry-level positions into a clinical research, research career. And from there, the possibilities are unlimited based on your interest in educational background. More advanced careers as you gain experience are being a CRA or a study monitor, a drug safety specialist, a biostatistician, a study manager or project manager, data scientist, a clinical data coordinator, clinical data analyst, and a clinical data manager. And of course, the list goes on. And if you are interested in being like a medical officer or a medical writer, that does require a higher degree such as a MD. Some common clinical research organizations that we that I'm sure you see a lot in the group are like 
Covance, PPD, Precision, Precision Medicine Group, Senios Health is where I work, Icon, PLC, Planet Pharma, Perexcel, IQVIA, MedPace, Premier Research, Health Decisions, MedPace, and WCG. Some of the sponsors, I'm sure you guys have heard of a lot of these sponsors since a lot of them are rolling out the COVID vaccine. Eli Lilly, Pfizer, Moderna, Johnson & Johnston, Takeda, Gilead Sciences, they're actually in the North Carolina area, AstraZeneca, Abby, Sanofi, and Novartis. Sometimes it is a lot easier to go through recruitment agencies, not saying you have to, but sometimes it's a bit easier. Some of the known recruitment agencies are Aerotech, AccuTalent, Advanced Recruiting Partners, Green Key Resources, Accent Service Groups, Piper Companies, and ProClinical. Okay, now we're about to get to the nitty gritty, y'all. Like, this is where the real work happens. So you all are interested in, you know, getting into the industry. Okay, cool. But, you know, if we're interested in something, of course, we're going to look it up and conduct our research to see what we might like, or what we what we don't like, and, you know, find our potential jobs. So for starters, we got to get our resume straight. You can't go into the interview or applying a, for a job and your resume isn't together. Your resume needs to be in the best shape possible. And your transferable skills need need to be present when I glance, when someone glances at your resume. If you aren't on LinkedIn, I highly suggest you create a LinkedIn. It is a great platform to network with other professionals. And if you are on LinkedIn, make sure you have a professional photo as your profile picture. Update your LinkedIn with previous work and volunteer experience that may be relevant. You can also create a professional summary on your page for people that you know glance at your page or even send a connection request to get to know you a little bit. We also have a service on the Black Women Clinical Research website if you don't know what to say. There's someone that can help you with that. On LinkedIn as well, you can also search for entry-level positions in your area or remotely. Most entry-level most entry level positions are office based. I enjoyed my time at the office. I wouldn't trade it for the world, but if you can get your get your position remotely, get your position however you get it, but don't be surprised if it is in the office. And of course, with LinkedIn, you could also connect with like minded individuals. Okay, so I got your resume together. You got your LinkedIn profile straight, but it ain't over. Yes, you're on LinkedIn, but how are you active on LinkedIn? Are you liking people's posts? Are you sharing? Are you commenting? Because the more you like people's posts, you share their posts, or you comment on someone else's post, you get visibility. People will start to look at your profile, even glance at it, maybe even send you a message about a potential job. There's, there's also a great way to look at look for other positions or even connect with other people by using hashtags. I use, a, I use the majority of the hashtags like clinical research jobs, clinical research, clinical trials, jobs. You can really put just about anything in the hashtag and something will come up. And a lot of these recruiters and companies use hashtags to gain potential candidates. If you do happen to use a hashtag and then find someone that is recruiting for a certain position, send them a LinkedIn request, comment on their um, post, give them a like. People, Believe it or not, people notice the small things. It's the small things that count. Okay, so you have your resume together, your LinkedIn together. So now we, we need to get yourself together for this interview. You, okay, so you might not have an interview tomorrow, but it's gonna come. We stay ready so you don't have to get ready. And that's on Big Purr, because Big Purr is here. So during your interview prep, ask questions, take notes, build your confidence. If you don't do nothing else, build your confidence. Because when you go into the interview, you want to know you are that woman, that person. And send a follow-up email after you do your interview and claim your job. Don't be, if I get the job, when you get the job. Start there, when I get the job. You don't know what job it is, what company, but it's coming if you put in the work. As a new member, I know going into the Facebook group, it could be a lot. There's a lot of information. 
like a lot. One thing that will be your best friend is the magnifier glass, which is the search. It should be on your right hand corner. This will allow you to search all previous posts. You can enter a word or a phrase and see what comes up. If you don't find an answer to your question, be sure to ask and create a post. You can also see our upcoming events by clicking on the events tab. We also have a files tab where we have a lot of documents that have great tips and support about being in the industry and even getting into the industry. Some of our services that we offer, resume review, get your resume checked, interview preparation, make sure you're prepared. Don't go into an interview unprepared. Career coaching, do you need some guidance on getting into the industry or your career in general? Mock interviews, do you need a, a you know, kind of like a fake interview to see how you um, interview, which is always good. You can never have too many mock interviews. Your LinkedIn summary, do you need a better LinkedIn summary so when people view your page, they know who they're speaking with and why they need to be in your DM. We also have biographies and cover letters. Me personally, I've used all of these services except the biography because my life isn't, I haven't been on this earth that long. I haven't done that much, but eventually I'll get there. We also have a mentorship program. Our mentorship program is currently closed, I believe, and will open within the next month and month and a half. So be on the lookout for that post and you'll have to fill out an application. So the admins can personally match you with someone in your area and of your interest. We also have other groups outside of Black women in clinical research, like Black men in clinical research, minorities in clinical research, and there's other additional resources such as ACRP, SOCRA, clinicaltrials.gov, and SACRA, the South African Clinical Research Group. Okay, now why does it do that? So that was pretty much the presentation. What questions do you guys have? I know it was a lot of information, but we're all here to help you get to where you want to be. Hey, good afternoon, everyone. And um, thank y'all for hosting this. I wanted to know what are some good ways to, um, or like what is a good organization or company to get free GCP certification? I want to say that this website is NIDA. I think it has a GCP certification that is free because I know I have something from that on company, but I'm sure if you Google like GCP certifications free, you could find something that, you know, is worth, you know, the certification and that is free. Okay, I, yeah. I, I just took that GCP um, program. Um, it was on the... I could send you um, the link um, to where I went and took it. Okay, thank you. I'd appreciate that. I um I was I went on Google and I looked up free GCP and there was a whole bunch of different ones and I didn't want to get like one that wasn't you know that wouldn't be approved or anything. But thank you. Um, who who is um who is this? Um, Diana. I can put Diana. my email in the um chat box. Yeah. Okay. And then I'll send you the, um, I'll send you the link. Okay. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Okay. So if you, okay, I don't have any background in clinical trials. Like I said, I've been at Duke for the 19 years. Um, but I did do the GCP certification. Where should, what positions should I start applying for first? Well, what are your interests? I wanted, I was interested in the, the CRAs, but I know that's probably too, too much being that I don't have any experience. Well, I still been applying for them because, you know, all I can do is say no. But I mean, I don't know if I should have started small or where I should start first. Um, what is your conversation? What now? I'm sorry. Do you like work with patients? Yeah, I work with patients. I said, are you more of an introvert like some of us? No, I'm not. So um, what's your, 
I'm sorry, what's your current position now at Duke? A clinical medical office coordinator. So I feel like you definitely have transferable skills. And so with that, you could work at the CRO as a clinical trial coordinator. If you just wanted that entry level position to get in on the CRO level or based upon, I'm just trying to think what else. Like, you know, there's a lot of other positions. Like if you're interested in like data management, there's a Coursera course where you can take, I think there's like clinical research um, data management and clinical research. So there's there's other things that you can take this. Like it's only $50 if you want your certificate, but um, it's just really figuring out based upon your, like where you at now, what exactly do you want to do and what do you feel like your strong points are? So just really figuring out, you know, looking at your transferable skills and being able to determine, okay, do I possibly, you know, what is my, what is my career trajectory? Do I want to do um, project management or do I want to do data management? So just really researching a lot of the positions and looking at the job descriptions and figuring out which direction would you want to go to. Because if you wanted just an entry level position to just kind of get your foot in the door, you can definitely do a clinical trial coordinator, a clinical trial assistant. They, they call it different things depending on what CRO that you're at. So um, and like at PPD, it's a clinical trial coordinator, but at like some of the other companies, it's a clinical trial assistant. So I think just doing that and adding, adding your GCP to your resume, making sure that that's on there and having those buzzwords on your resume. So then when you go through the applicant tracking system that they can pick up those words that's on your resume. And so, right. you know, a lot of times I'm, I'm pretty sure with you being in the clinic, you have those transferable skills, but it's just really like pulling them out. Like if you've managed a lot of projects, if you had to resolve a lot of queries, you know, different things like that are transferable. And once you display that in your resume, then you are really what they're looking for as far as, you know, the position, especially, you know, if you've had to manage a lot of files or electronic databases, like a lot of times people don't, even though the database may not be the same or, you know, call the same thing, if you had to manage any type of like electronic files and electronic databases or any type of systems and, you know, softwares that you've had to deal with, a lot of that is what they're looking for as far as the position. Okay. Okay. All right, cool. Thank you. And you're welcome. And also feel free to, to also um, sign up for the resume review because that helps like that helped me pull out a lot of my skills because what I've noticed and what I've, what I've noticed with myself and what I've noticed with a lot of members is we have these jobs, we have all of these skills, but a lot of times when we acquire a new skill, we don't record that on our resume. A lot of times we don't record it when we start a new position. And so a lot of times when we're thinking about this, you know, this position, it's like later on after we're probably not working there or when we're, it's time to look for a new job. And by that time you've been at a company for years. So now you're trying to backtrack and figure out, okay, these are some of the skills that I I acquired why I was, you know, at this job. So I think a lot of times, you know, once you talk to someone who is a career professional and they help you pull out those skills to, so that it can be displayed on your resume, it, it really makes a difference when you apply to these positions. Okay. Gotcha. Okay. Thanks so much. You are so welcome. So I have a question. Um, oh, okay. Um, so I have a finance background and um, I was on another Zoom call on Monday, and they told me that a good area for me, for me to start out would be in the budgets and contracts side. Yep. Would that kind of tie into what I'm doing? Absolutely. Seeing that it's in finance? Okay. Yep, they have, um, they, they have some positions where it just says like clinical research finance. They have, you know, the budgets and contracts. Um, and so I'm, you know, I'm not familiar with all the positions that might fall under there, but I just kind of know, I guess the broad, you know, when it comes to um, like the broad titles, when it comes to budgets and contracts. So I'm not sure if there are any like specific positions that might fall under that umbrella, but I know like with budgets and contracts and finance and maybe even like a, a um, I think it might be a business analyst you know, those type of positions where, you know, you don't have to feel like, okay, I'm taking this position. I know a lot of times when I talk to people, 
they're like, okay, well, I'm coming from budgets and contracts and I don't want my rest of my career to be budgets and contracts. But a lot of times you have to take that position that you have experience with to get right. in and then you can pivot once you've um, been in that position. Because a lot of times, you know, especially with the CROs, they're hiring from within. Okay. I, I would say, oh, sorry, I had the budgets and uh, contracts as the first position just to get in the door. Um, and again, I didn't want to, like you said, Danielle, to stay there. But uh, again, acquiring that knowledge um, gave a, a big foot forward um, applying to other jobs. Um, but also, like, there's a financial analyst. Um, there's, there's a whole other ladder to move up on that side if that's what you're interested in. Okay, I appreciate that. I wanted to ask, um, what do you think is a good starting salary for most of these entry level positions? I feel like I sold myself kind of short and it shows. These, oh, oh. that's a broad question. Too. I'm about to say, I'm about to say these entry level positions. Am I yeah. saying what I started at? My, you don't want to um, hear mine either. I'm going to say my clinical research coordinator position, I think was at 35 or 38 when I started. And well, I tried, yeah. I tried to negotiate. They said, no. I said, what do you mean? No, they said, there's no negotiation. We're not going to accept it. Don't even try. I'm like, I've never heard that before. So my first position in like the industry, I couldn't ne negotiate it at all, but you know, after I got that experience and I know a lot of times people don't want to hear this, especially if you're coming from a different, you know, level, like if you, if you're making, cause for me, I was making almost double that before I decided to um, switch to clinical research. So now here I'm making, you know, pretty much double what I was making in clinical genetics. And then I switched to clinical research and had to take a huge pay cut, but it's like that pay cut had to prepare me, you know, like, I don't, I don't know why they do it a lot of times, but, you know, some people are lucky where they don't have to take a huge pay cut, but other people aren't as lucky. And so, you know, for me, I had to really start from the ground up. I had to, you know, be an intern and then from being an intern, um, work as a clinical research coordinator. And, you know, now I'm a remote site monitor, but it took time. And a lot of times they, like they said, they want you to have that experience. So you kind of, I wouldn't say if it's an entry level to not expect a high salary a lot of times. Um, but, you know, I know some clinical trial, like people who've been a clinical trial, you know, coordinator and clinical trial assistant could probably give you better information as far as what their salary was when they started. I guess it depends on the setting because in the hospital you would expect um, just as what you had spoke on before, uh, the 35s is normal for CRCs in the hospital. Um, but again, it's just a, it's just to get your experience. And then from there, it's just like the ceiling is open, so. Okay, well, thank you. I think my issue was I was trying to give them, when they asked me what I wanted, I tried to give them a lower number. And then when the oh, hiring manager like tried to negotiate that, they were just like, no, she said she'd take this, so we're gonna give her this. Um, yeah, I don't know, the, negotiate, the negotiation part, I didn't get to negotiate my first one either. It was similar to what Danielle said. They basically said, we don't do that here. So unfortunately. Um, um, I, I have a question. Um, if I don't have any background experience in clinical research, but I'm trying to get into it, do you recommend me um, attending a program at, a university for it or like just get free training on it or anything um I definitely recommend like trying to get like free training as possible because even with programs they don't always guarantee you a job and a lot of the information they are like giving you is found on the internet for free Okay. So I would just like do my do your research on like things in the clinical research industry and stuff and also like connect with other like like minded people just to get that conversation. So you're used to the terminology and the language of how things are spoken. But I, I would say at your last resort, try to avoid like a expensive program because there's definitely ways of getting into the industry without it. Okay. All right. Thank you so much.
I was hey, gonna say, Brittany, um, are you currently at an office or anything that has clinical research opportunity no. at all? No, I'm not. I currently, I'm a teacher, but oh, okay. I, my background, I've, I have my undergraduate degree in um, biology. Mm -hmm. um, and I just, when I graduated, I could not find anything like within my field um, working in a lab. So I resulted to teaching, but of course it's not what I want to do. Okay. So, yeah. So when you say teaching, like uh, elementary school, middle school, or middle school? Uh, okay. Um, so a look for me, uh, for me to actually get the clinical research associate position, I actually bug the owner of a private, a private practice, excuse me. Mm -hmm. So like I basically talked to not every conversation I had with him, but at least five out of 10 conversations I had with him, I expressed my interest. So I do... Um, I do advise if you are around clinical research opportunities or if you're just around in a hospital, teaching hospital that actually do clinical research to like immerse yourself with people around you, um, get to know them. Um, it costs nothing to like have just a genuine kind conversation with somebody and you can bring it up. Just let them know that you're interested um, because that's actually how I got my way. Like my foot in the door is basically bugging the owner of a practice. Okay. And so, yeah, just I would say that's network. the same for me. Um, mm -hmm. I literally went on clinicaltrials.gov and I can put that um, in the in the chat also. But mm -hmm. I went on clinicaltrials.gov and I just started searching the clinics, um, like the clinical trials that were the nearest to like the nearest to me. So at the time when I was searching, um, I found a couple of clinics. I was living in in Smyrna, Georgia. So I found a, a couple of clinical research clinics and I just started calling them and leaving messages, sending emails. You know, I, I felt like, you know, if I want this, you have to be, you know, hungry for it. You definitely have to push your way through. This is not what you I realized at that. Hmm? You got to be starving. Yes. So what I realized at that time that nobody was going to give me this job in clinical research, that if I wanted it, I was going to have to think outside of the box and do whatever I needed to do, because at that time I had I had quit my job. So I'm at a point where I'm like, OK, I have no choice but to get in. Like I pretty much I had a come to Jesus talk with myself. I said I have no choice but to get into this industry. So I'm going to have to figure out a way because I'm no longer working. I'm I'm working at <laughs> I'm doing Uber Eats, DoorDash, Amazon Flex, like something has to give. So I remember just, you know, because maybe because I was in that mindset that I was not going to give up and I wasn't going to take no for an answer, that that's why I really was. um persistent with contacting the clinical research clinics and it just so happened that you know one of the clinical research clinics that I contacted was a, a black owned clinical research clinic and so when I got there you know they told me pretty much when I finally got to in contact with someone because it's not it might take a couple of times of reaching out to people and finding different people at you know the clinical trial office to to um get in contact with so when they finally reached back out to me they told me to come in and they would, um, we would do an interview. So I remember, you know, at the time I'm like, okay, well, let me get my hair done, you know, cause I'm like, this is it. Like I, I tell myself, I'm like, this is it. And so I get there and they tell me that there's no interview that if I want to learn about clinical research, then they'll train me. And so from there, that was like my foundation and where I learned, you know, how like the, um, on a site level, how everything was ran and how, as far as, you know, consenting patients and, you know, talking to them about their medications that they were on and figuring out how are they selecting, you know, the subjects for the clinical trials and, you know, seeing the regulatory binder and seeing all of, you know, the systems. And so even to this day, this, the lady that, that I worked with at the time that was a clinical research coordinator, you know, I never knew that with me coming to a PPD, she was the one that I was going to use as a referral. So, you know, I've still kept in contact. And so that's what I always tell you too, to make sure that you, these relationships that you have, that, you know, you don't burn any bridges with people because you never know, you know, when you might have to need them or they might need you. And so what I always try and do and tell people is to give back, you know, like if some, if, put that on mute. Okay. <laughs> I don't know what's happening there, but, you know, to, to definitely, you know, if, if 
Like I always, that's why, that's why I, I help other people because I realize how hard and how much of a struggle it is. And a lot of times because we have started black women in clinical research, some of the people that it was taking, like, you know, for example, it was taking me years to get in. We have helped shorten that into a few months for people just by helping them, you know, manage their resume and getting there. Like um, Andrika's on a call too. Like she does the interview prep. So you just have to make sure that when it comes to clinical research, that you are a well-rounded clinical research professional. You like, like Jasmine was saying, you need to be on LinkedIn. You need to be on pe in people's inbox. You know, like it's almost like when I remember when I started, I used to ask people, I'm like, I feel like I'm, you know, a pest to people. And, you know, people used to tell me, they was like, if you want this job, you're going to do whatever you, you got to do in order to get it. So it don't matter how many emails, how many people you have to reach out to on LinkedIn, how many people in the group you have to reach out to and talk to. And I know I remember talking to Rashida and she always used to say this when it's coming to, you know, you're meeting somebody new, get them on the phone. Because a lot of times that personal connection that you have, a lot of times people are not going to turn you down when you say, well, you know, when you send them a message and be like, well, can we set up a call? You know, yeah, so right. when you put the ball in their court, a lot of nine times out of 10 people, when you ask them, can we schedule a meeting? They're not going to say no. Usually people will be like, okay, this person is serious. If you want to get on the phone with me and talk about, you know, your career and, you know, if how I can help you they know that you're taking this serious and they're going to, they're going to remember you. So it might not be now where a position is available, but down the road, they might be like, okay, well, I remember I talked to Jasmine. Jasmine told me she was interested in this. And so that's, that's how your name comes up. And that's why you want to keep your name almost in a sense, you want to keep your name in people's mouths and like, so that it's fresh on their mind. If a position comes up, you're the first person they think about, or they're going to reach back out to you because you've already explained yourself to them and what you're trying to do in this industry. Right. Thank you so much. You are welcome. I know that was a mouthful. <laughs> I took every bit. <laughs> okay, I have a question. Um, and for, I guess, all of the epi people that might be on the line. Um, so my background is in epi. And I guess I'm wondering, can I directly start applying for clinical research coordinators? And I guess... Additionally, the reason I'm asking is because I, I work with TB and molecular surveillance. And so with TB, a lot of my background already is working with nurses, understanding their diagnostic tests and doing data analysis with, you know, if they had an IGRA, they had blood pooled um, because for TB, the state mandates that you, you know, have um, drug therapy every single day in person for nine months. So I'm wondering if I guess those skills already translate to working with patients, uh, specimen collection, data analysis, or should I, would I still need to apply for, I think you said entry positions or like clinical uh, coordinator? Um, it sounds like you were, you said you were interested in the clinical research coordinator position, correct? Yes. Um, that's entry level. And since you do have the experience um, working with nurses and in that environment, I think you'll be great with it, but it's all a matter of how um, it's presented on your resume. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you want, if you get your resume, um, you know, reviewed and straight, I think, I think you'll transition smoothly. Okay. And you guys said you, that is on the website, right? Yes. So you can type that, okay. you can type that in too. And also what I was going to say is there is a post in the group that someone else recently posted about epidemiology and they said that it's a CRO that is hiring for, um, for that position. I can't remember. I would have to go back and search. I want to say possibly icon or covans i'm not really sure, but I would have to go back and look. So a lot of times there, there are positions out there. You just have to you know, search or just ask someone in the group. But I know a couple of people that are in the group that are um, in epidemiology. And so I can try and find that post also. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Hi, my name is Nicole Sandiford. Um, I have a question. What is the difference between a clinical trial assistant and a clinical trial associate? Um, primarily, they're the same thing depending on the company. 
as a um, CTA, uh, an assistant, or even an associate, we do a lot of background work for like the project managers, CRAs, and we work closely with study startups. So for the most part, the positions are very similar, but it does vary company to company, if that makes sense. Thank you. Hey y'all, this is Andrika. Um, hey, just, <laughs> what's up? I just wanted to say that for all the newbies who don't have any clinical research on their resumes at all, we suggest that you take the NIDA GCP course. Like it doesn't matter where you are in your career. If you don't have a GCP course, you're going to eventually need it anyway. And it's going to give you the great, like great foundational or theoretical knowledge about certain clinical research areas, such as IRB, informed consents, the different phases of clinical trials. And these are all great things to know and that you can leverage in your interviews. And by the way, I do interview prep. Just plugging that in there. She's great, y'all, for real. I ain't even gonna cap. I can't Where stop laughing at y'all. Y'all are hilarious. <laughs> Big purr and little purr. And yeah, I'm little purr. <laughs> well, I have a question in addition to the, the, GCP. the GCP. Yes. Go ahead. Yeah, I wanted to know, um, besides that certification, what other certifications are out there for, for people who are interested and with no experience they can get their hands on to be able to add to the resume? Um, there's certificates at the Mayo Clinic. I'm not sure if they're free or not because I got them during my internship, but I do have a few certificates from the Mayo Clinic. And then sometimes if you just Google some things, something will pop up truthfully but um if you're proactive about it you know finding certificates and just learning you'll you'll find your way i'm going to put some courses also from um uh, what is that coursera and i know coursera. what is hmm um, I'm, I'm sorry i, I did someone's... see some courses in coursera but i didn't see a gcp training in that one so there are, and then um, someone else was talking about there, I don't know if you are a ACRP member, but if you are an ACRP member, you can take the free GCP um, course with um, ACRP. And they do have discounts if you are a student um, for ACRP. Okay. So are you specifically looking for GCP or are you looking just for any type of certificate in clinical research? In addition to GCP, um, okay. because I have no experience. Um, I, I found a school, because I'm in the Atlanta metro area called Gwinnett Tech College that's offering a program. Um, it's a public um, school, so it's not as expensive as if it was private. And um, they do offer 22 credits to get a, a clinical professional certificate. So that was what I was thinking um, to go in that direction. But, you know, I, I don't know what the best course of action is. I'm just trying to see what would you know, be the best way to go. Um, question, question I, how I, much is that program? Um, About 3,000. Okay, that's not as bad as, you know, I shouldn't say bad, but some of the other programs are $8,000. And fast I, I heard, I looked into that too, it was 8,000. I was like, oh, that's, that's kind of expensive. Um, but they also give you some time towards like if you want to get a certification. So they, you know, if you take the courses with them, they give you time towards that where you don't have to wait the two years to do the certification to be a professional, a certified professional. So there's some perks, but I, you know, that's why I'm here today is to find out like what else do I need to know? Maybe there is a different route. So I, I wasn't really too sure if this was the best way or just fixing my resume and putting GCP certification on there and I would be good to go, but I'm not really sure. So I would say yeah. for, I'm just a little background on me. I didn't have any, I didn't take any clinical research courses or anything like that. I just, you know, like just put myself out there and went to the clinic. So, you know, I don't know if that's an option for you to do or just, you know, starting I tried at to do that, but COVID is an issue. Like that people wanting to see you now because of what's going on with COVID. Um, so I kind of started my journey not 
not before long COVID started. So like people don't want to really meet right now. <laughs> That's what I'm running into. Okay. But there also is like a clinical trial coordinator position. There's a clinical trial assistant position. So really focusing on those transferable skills that you have and looking mm-hmm. at what the clinical research transferable skills are so that you can have that in your resume. So that if you're, you know, if you're, if you're just trying to get in, then you can apply to those entry level positions as a clinical trial mm-hmm. coordinator, a clinical trial assistant. You can work remotely, but you know, I know for me, I felt like I had to put in my time before I had the opportunity to work from home. But you know, everybody's situation is different. So depending on how you can, you know, put your resume together and really highlight your skills and let the recruiters and the managers know like these are my transferable skills this is what I bring to the table you Mm -hmm. have all the opportunity in the world like I know there's we have members in the group a lot of them they didn't they didn't have clinical research experience before they weren't even coming from you know they didn't have a science background per se but because Mm -hmm. they were able to really capture all of that on their resume they got hired for those entry-level clinical research positions and you know some one person that you know, I know this in the group, you know, because she did that. Now she's she's able, I think it was maybe six months or maybe less than six months. Now she has a new position. And, you know, looking at her background, there was no direct connection to clinical research. But just because she was, you know, I want to say networking with people definitely helps a lot too. Like if you're, if you're on LinkedIn, like I pretty much, I feel like I'm on LinkedIn more than I'm on Facebook. I'm constantly, you know, liking posts commenting on posts, using the hashtag, reaching out to people, you know, and so I get to the point where a lot of times before I even meet people, they tell me, I've seen you all over LinkedIn. Well, I'm like, well, that's great. Cause that's what I was trying to, you know, like that's the you goal that it. I was, you know, so, so that's why a lot of times, you know, people are in like, I, I was on a meeting and people feel like they already know me because of the posts that I've created and they've seen me before and they, you know, so just really, you know, thinking of yourself as a brand and, you know, thinking that I have to brand myself in order to, to be in this industry and making a name for myself. So that's really what you have to do, you know, especially if you're, you know, you don't have experience, but you're trying to get the experience. So I always look at it like the people have something that you need. So if they have something that you need, then you're going to do everything in your power to, you know, to get what they have so they can, they, they, even if they don't give you a position, a lot of times people kind of, I think, devalue like networking. This person might not be able to give you a position, but they might know somebody else they can. So, you know, making sure you are networking, connecting with people, looking up the positions that you want to work in and connecting with those people. Okay. Sounds good. Um, um I also want to just add on to what you said, Danielle. Um, I think our network at in Black Women in Clinical Research is is a great group to be a part of. Um, I have people who have reached out to me personally, um, and I have personally made some phone calls for people. You know, so just taking that initiative to reach out to you know. Um, the group members um, and just introduce yourself, have a conversation of what your goals are. um, And you never know where that conversation can lead to. So definitely like Danielle said, if it's something that you want, be hungry enough to go get it. Um, Don't be afraid to inbox somebody um, and ask about opportunities. Thank you. Um, I was going to highlight in regards to the professional certificate you were mentioning. Um, mm-hmm. You had said it was you saw it was like eight thousand or three thousand, and then one was eight thousand. Um, mm-hmm. I did do one of those as well um, when I decided I wanted to be in clinical research for real, um, and I believe mine was five at the University of Cincinnati. So. Um, with that, I think it did get a good background um, and general information to transition easily into the CRC role. Um, just in the interview process, I know they did mention, you know, having that certificate was a little bit, setting it a little bit apart, um, even though I didn't have any other previous experience in clinical research. So that's just my two cents on the uh, professional certificate route. Got it.
I do have a question that's a little bit off um, with regards to trying to get employment and um, with the vaccine. Is it hard to get into clinical research if um, you're not wanting to get vaccinated? I would say that depends on your role in company. Okay. So like if like let's say you're you're a CRA and some of your sites um only take vaccinated, you know, people into their office, like it literally can depend on the company. But if you're against the vaccine, which is fine, um I'm not against it, it's just I I actually have a medical exemption. I'm like that one percent that can't take it. Oh, that's where I would just more than likely like present your case because it's not like you're refusing it but even if you are that's your decision mm -hmm. so i mean i think it goes on a case-by-case -case basis and depending on your role if you have that interaction with people or not as well yeah okay let's say the, the companies it all depends on the companies because i know for me on my study that i'm on they pretty much have it to where you know the a lot of the sites they want um cras that are vaccinated so it's, it's like, at the, I don't know if, if it's, if, I know they're starting to change it, but for the CRO that I'm at, they pretty much just told people, you know, if you are vaccinated and you are okay with going to this site and monitoring, you know, the clinical trial, just let us know. And they let people know, you know, there's nothing against you if you're, if you're not vaccinated. We're just saying this site prefers vaccinated people to come got it okay because I was worried about that and I was like and that's what kind of stalled me from considering it because I know it's you know clinical research that you study um different types of treatments therapeutic areas and I was like am I going to be able to get into that especially with what's going on so thank you for that I appreciate it you're right, welcome I have a question can you yes. hear me mm -hmm. we can hear you Okay, hey, so I'm pretty new to the um, clinical research, everything pretty much. I've been looking to it for the last year and the last few months I'm really trying to get into it. And I have a background as a pharmacy tech for over 15 years with a master's in public administration. So I was trying to figure out where could I start and I even applied for a position where they contacted me and then they were asking me very specific information in terms of clinical research, in terms of experience. So I was trying to figure out where would be the best place to start? And with my background in pharmacy, would that be, you know, pretty much good transferable skills for a entry-level position? Yes, uh, PPD right now is hiring, or I believe um, the HR lady reached out to me and asked me if I had anyone that had experience, that I, if I knew anyone that had experience as a pharmacy tech, because they have a, I wanna say a clinical operations um, position available. So, okay. and um, I think right now PPD might, I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to speak on it, but hopefully they'll be announcing it soon. And as far as what they're doing and trying to kind of um, have a program for different people who want to be CRA. So I think that they're going to probably announce that soon. Um, but it's definitely, you know, if you, if you're interested in the clinical operation position, you can send me an email and I can send it over to the, the HR lady. Okay, that sounds great. That is definitely something I would be interested in. And what's your name again? I can't see on my screen. I'm Danielle. Danielle. Okay. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions? Comments, concerns, thoughts? We can, I guess we can ask people if there's any other ways that they, they want, you know, support or is there anything else that, you know, we could do. Hey, y'all, this is Monica. I'm not, I'm not a newbie, but I just wanted to say that I love being in the group. So newbies, you have found a good sisterhood of positive people that are all going to be in your corner and rooting for you. So they might not always tell you what you want to hear, but it's always constructive and it's going to, you know, it's going to make you better. And I just realized that I'm not where I want to be, but someone here might want to be where I am. So I work at NIH. So if anyone's interested in working in academia at NIH or being a, a nurse, I'm a clinical research nurse, but I also am a labor and delivery nurse. So I can help and reach out to anybody with anything. And I'm a member of SOCRA and ACRP and 
I'm taking classes and I'm all over the place. So please reach out. Micah, I'm curious, what position are you interested in? Still to marry Rich Danielle, but <laughs> <laughs> still I'm looking for CRA monitor. <laughs> really? Okay. So I think I've seen something well, where they, yeah, where they said they I am all over the place right now. I am sending out feelers and making friends and networking and I am used to rejection. It doesn't bother me anymore at this point. I love your question today about rejection and when people don't answer me and stuff, they just, they don't know what they're missing. That's all. Yeah, that's ab absolutely. Cause the, the people that reject, the many people that rejected me, I have connected with all of the people exactly. that ever rejected exactly. me. And so now they get a front seat at everything that's going on. Exactly. Like, you know, yes. So, yeah. I've, yeah. I've been to meetings at ACRP and, and there's nothing like being rejected in your face at places saying, hey, I want to be a monitor. And the first thing they say is, do you have two years experience? I still don't understand. We go in this circle of, do you have two years experience? Well, where do I get it from if you don't give me my first job? How am I supposed to get certified? Yeah. So yeah, I'm working on, and I had this epiphany of, yes, I've never been a CRA, but everybody that's been a CRA now, they had to start somewhere, you know? So transferable skills are important, but we still know and read the same GCPs and ICH and E9s and E6s that CRAs do know. I mean, I know the other side. So actually, I'm going to say, actually, some people say that you right. guys are more qualified i mean because you are a nurse but so i know i gotta find it where i've seen i know there's a lot of people that take nurses on as cras and there's a lot of there's a lot of members in the group i'm going to connect you after we get off this call i'm going to connect you with some of the members that started off as clinical research nurses and switched over to a cra because there's there's quite a bit in the group yeah, but I also want to vouch for the newbies as far as your program with the, the resume review. I've done the resume review. I've done career counseling. I've done interview prep. So eventually I'll be signing up to update my LinkedIn and do negotiation skills. But, but I mean, I love the process. So it's worth it. It's worth it to invest in yourself. It can't hurt you. Any class that you want to take, anything that you can get on your resume, any person you reach out to. I mean, it's all worth it. Just, just try. Definitely. Um, quick question. Um, As a CRC, how many years experience would you have to have in that field before you are even considered for a CRA position? So that all depends. Um, like I, I met someone the other day at a PPD that only had a year of being a CRC. Me, I tried to apply. I mean, yeah, I tried to apply for positions after my year of a CRC, I got rejected because they told me they needed two years. And then right when I was right when I applied to another program that they said two years, I, I literally this is what happened to me. I had an interview, and um, right when the interview was about to happen, I received an email from the recruiter saying, "I'm so sorry, Danielle. They changed the requirements. Um, two years is no longer. Um, <laughs> they no longer want two years." And so she, I was like, I can't believe that she wouldn't just even get on the call with me. But, you know, that, that, that is the nature of the beast a lot of times with this industry. So it could be one year, it could be two years, it could be three years. It's really, I want to say how you present yourself and how your resume is and, you know, especially how your interview skills are. And so what I think worked for me, because I know, I don't know, I know a lot of people probably have this, but I have interview anxiety. So I know for me, it was going to take me a little while longer because certain things that, you know, I know that I would be nervous about. So I pretty much set up a system when it was time for me to interview, because a lot of times when I interview, I would go blank. So, you know, on an interview and you can't remember what you're talking about or, you know, your, your train of thought or you're, you're just rambling on. So what I used to do is I created a science board and I put a lot of the notes, a lot of the things that I would forget. Like if I, if I got there and they might've asked me what phases are, you know, what are the clinical trial phases? I will put, you know, those up there, just, you know, just real big to just jog my memory. Or if it was something where there's someone will ask me, what are my strengths? What are my weaknesses? You know, tell me about a time where, you know, you had to, I don't know, show leadership or tell me about a difficult time where you had to, I don't know, conflict resolution. So a lot of those stuff like that, I will put on my science board and I will put it at eye level. 
So that way when I'm sitting at the computer and I'm talking and I have a moment where I forget what I'm going to say, I would just, you know, my eyes would go to that, that little notepad, the, yeah, the little, the little post-it and, you know, that would help me, you know, jog my memory and get back on track. And so, you know, when I stopped thinking about the interview process as um, pretty much stop thinking about it like a test and think of it as a conversation and an opportunity to really display mm -hmm you know, who I am, why I'm here, how did I get to this point, and just telling them a journey, that's when the door started open, when I told them, okay, you know, being myself, and I think, you know, a lot of times people don't feel that way when they're having an interview, because they're under so much pressure, but if you can tell your journey, and, you know, how you have came to this point where you're, you know, in front of them, I, I think that's extremely helpful, Cause you're, you're just letting them know I'm, you know, I'm a real person. And like with Andrika and her prep, looking up the, you know, the managers that you're going to interview with so they can give you something to talk about, you know, so you can think of them as a real person and not, you know, this person is <laughs> like over me so high. But once I, once I started looking up my, like the people that I was interviewing with, I'm like, oh, okay, they like, they like to work out. I like to work out. So, you know, just having little stuff, I did stalk them and it's okay to stalk them. So I went on their Instagram, found out different things about them. And that was like my conversation piece. And that made, that was like my icebreaker. So, you know, just thinking about things like a little differently and, you know, especially if you have any questions, you can reach out to any of us, you know, Jasmine, all of us, the brand ambassadors, Andrika, you know, we're definitely going to help you. But if you need interview prep, we're going to we're going to refer you to the website and a resume review. We're going to refer you to the re website. But um, other than that, we definitely give a lot of free advice. Um, you know, a lot of us in the group, like we're not getting paid to do this. We're doing this out of the kindness of our heart. A lot of us, you know, especially with being a brand ambassador and being an admin. And so, you know, only thing that, you know, people are being paid for are the paid services. But other than that, the advice that we give is free. I definitely appreciate it. Yeah. Do you offer consultation? Like, I know I want to do the resume um, with you guys as far as reviewing and see how I can change it. But like, based on the skills, the transfer skills that I have, do you guys give recommendations on what the entry level should be? Because um, I may think, oh, okay, CRC, CRC may be the start for me, but what about maybe, like you were saying, the budget analysis might be the better way to go. So is that part of the resume process or is that like a different session that I would have to just request? I do consultations um, if anyone's interested, but, you know, a lot of times I, I think because of the information that we give in, in the group that, you know, a lot of times people don't need it, but, you know, it's available if anyone wants to have the consultation and wants to go over their background, like with the consultations that I give, I pretty much, you know, tell people about, you know, my journey, like how we talked about right now, I tell them about my journey, give them background on, you know, um, uh, Black women in clinical research, I let them tell me about their journey and their skill set that they have, and we just kind of go through, you know, what exactly, what positions they're interested in looking at, we go over what salary, you know, they're looking at. So that way, you know, if you're telling me what salary that you're trying to stick with and you're telling me, okay, if you want to work remote or if you don't want to work remote, we kind of go through your background and go through as far as the salary requirements that you are looking for and figure out what's the best position for you to start with. And so I know that this has, has helped people to kind of start thinking, you know, maybe a position that they weren't necessarily thinking about gives them, you know, an idea, okay, well, I can go down this route and I can look at this job and I can connect with these people. So a lot of times too, if I meet with someone and you tell me, okay, like the one lady was saying, I have background in epidemiology, I'll find someone else that has a background in epidemiology and connect you with someone. So, you know, we, I can do that consultations, 30 minutes. Um, and it's just a one-on-one -on -one to help people really get started and figuring out, you know, what is my next, like, cause a lot of times, and that's how I felt, I felt lost. And I didn't feel like I had any resources and no one was telling me, okay, well, Danielle, this is what you need to do. And you need to get your resume right. And even the small stuff, like having a Word document, a lot of times with the applicant tracking system, you don't know that a PDF is not preferred. Well, but yes, but I, mean, I don't, I don't know because.
Okay, so I okay. mean, yep, that's available. Okay, Daniel, I have a question, please. Um, I used to work for um, Icon as um, CRE1 and AstraZeneca as um, CRE2. Then I transitioned to clinical research coordinator because I had a sick child and I needed to give him attention. So I've been trying to get back to maybe monitoring, but it's really been difficult. I've been rejected and rejected. I just don't know what to do. Yeah. Send me your resume. Okay, I will. Thank you. You're welcome. Any more questions? I have a question. Go ahead. Um, is the one-on-one -on -one consultation session on the website? Yes, it's on, if you go to um, blackwomenbwicr.com and go to career services, you can book a consultation with me. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. And also, Andrika, if you need interview prep. So I know just, just thinking about all the difference, because I know a lot of times people don't know about all of the service. So I'm going to run real quick through if anyone wants to listen to this. I'm sorry, Jasmine. Um, so with the resume review, the resume review is 30 minutes. Uh, they, they do a Zoom call. So they're going through your resume, and they're helping you to pick out skills that you may necessarily not have on your resume. So that's really helping you to use those skills in order to get the position so that your resume stands out. So a lot of times you definitely wanna make sure that you have, like we were saying, the GCP, the HIPAA, you know, especially if you have experience with a lot of, a lot of times people don't even realize that they've taken, you know, um, courses at their job. You know, a lot of times you take a, a, HIPAA, a HIPAA class, you know, like a lot of a lot of different things that you take at your job that you really don't think, OK, I can put this on my resume because I can't even tell you how many trainings I used to go through my jobs. And I didn't even think about, OK, what about all of my city training that I've that I've taken or, you know, a lot of different things where you can think about, OK, I've, I've taken some type of safety, some type of training that, you know, can transfer over. And so with the resume review, really pulling out those skills. And so you also have the mock interview, like if you want one of the career professionals to go over, you know, how it would be if you were having an interview in the industry. So if you're going to go in for a CRA or if you're going for a CRC, just having those questions and getting familiar with the process so you know what's to be expected of you when you have that, you know, that interview. And then we also have the interview prep, which is not where you're having a, you know, like, because the mock interview is where you're they're asking you the questions and you're answering. But depending, I know, um, Andrika does hers, you know, a little different. So she incorporates, I believe, the two. And so, you know, definitely um, signing up for those different, like career coaching also, like if you need help with figuring out, okay, what is my career path? We, that's a, also um, an option. And let's see, if you want someone, to, after you have your resume review, if you need someone to help you write your resume, because I'm be honest, I don't like writing and my resume was terrible before uh, starting Black Women in Clinical Research. That might have definitely been a reason why it took me a while to get in at the CRO level. But you know, a lot of times people don't realize that you look at your resume every you look at your resume every day. So you don't think, okay, I need to make some changes to my resume. So different different things like that, you know, where you can just figure out, okay, well, this is this is what I need to do you know, to pivot myself, to make myself a more attractive candidate. And so, you know, we just offer a wide variety of service from your LinkedIn, from your cover letter to a LinkedIn summary to your full LinkedIn. And so we're 